The problem with Facebook is that it's keeping things from you. You don't see most of what is posted by your friends or the pages you follow. Now, pages can be businesses or they can be individual creators like I Freaking Love Science or my own page, Veritasium. When you post something on your personal page, it only goes out to a small fraction of your friends. Now, if they like it and engage with it, it'll be spread to more of them, but if they don't, the post basically stops there. And the number of people your post reached is never revealed to you. Now, imagine what this does to news feeds. Friends and family and pages that you don't actively engage with will disappear over time. This usually means that people you disagree with will vanish, leaving you with a newsfeed that's effectively an echo chamber of self-affirming views, the things you already think and believe. And don't you think it's possible to see a post and like it or find it interesting without having the need to actually like it or comment on it? I mean, it seems weird that you need to put out there every view, you need to make that an active choice. You know what posts people like most of all? It's babies and weddings. Does this news feed look familiar? Now Facebook would argue this filtering is absolutely essential. The average teen has about 300 Facebook friends, and the average user likes 40 pages. Each day, 4.75 billion posts are shared across the site. That's an average of about 4 per user. Who is sharing all of this stuff? It certainly isn't me. But that means that if you were to log in once per day, you could be exposed to up to 1,500 posts. Okay, so clearly some filtering is required. The problem is, Facebook is using its filtering power in order to make money. Now just to use myself as an example, over 109,000 people have liked my page. Thank you to those who have done that. But the last time I shared a video on there, it only went in the news feeds of about 9,000 of those people. This continues the downward trend in numbers I've been seeing. In a recent fact sheet, Facebook stated, we expect organic distribution of an individual page's posts to gradually decline over time. That means they are actively restricting the reach of posts from people like me in order to force us into paying to reach the people who have already indicated that they like what we do. It doesn't make sense for independent creators like me or for charities or nonprofits or for individual users like you. I mean, did you know you could pay to promote a personal post? Like that time that Bill Nye taught you how to tie a bow tie? Yeah, $7 more and more of your friends can find out about that. That to me seems crazy and desperate. Take a second and think about this. On YouTube, creators are paid for every view of their content, whereas on Facebook it's the opposite. Creators actually have to pay for views. Uh, how does this work? Why in these two seemingly similar situations does the money flow in opposite directions? Well, I've got three ideas. First, People go to these sites for very different reasons. They go to YouTube to be entertained, to see cool new things, and to learn. In contrast, on Facebook, they go to catch up with friends and families, to share pictures and messages, so family and friends are really the main draw. Now second, on Facebook the interaction with posts is very brief, so it's difficult to say how much a great page like Science Alert or I Freaking Love Science actually brings people back to Facebook. Undoubtedly they do, it's just very difficult to quantify. In contrast, on YouTube, every view happens for minutes on a particular video and the amount of revenue generated is known, so it's easy to identify how much value is created with every view. Third, and perhaps most important, on YouTube the roles of creator, advertiser, and viewer are distinct. The creators make the videos that the viewers want to watch, the advertisers make the pre-rolls and the banner ads, and the majority of viewers are not also creators. In contrast, on Facebook, the creators are treated like advertisers, they have to pay to reach the viewers. And viewers themselves are also creators, so viewers are also advertisers. You know, when Facebook launched the functionality that allowed us to promote personal posts, one reporter commented quite astutely that we are all now advertisers. And that is the problem with Facebook. We are all advertisers because Facebook can't figure out another way to monetize its humongous user base. I mean, people don't click on those sidebar ads because, well, they don't come to Facebook to shop for things. The click-through rate is only about 0.05%. Compare that to 2% for Google Ads. Well, that makes sense because people actually go to Google when they want to buy things. The result of Facebook's business model is a misalignment of incentives. Users just want to see the best content out there, but increasingly they're just being shown the content from the highest bidder. The main organically shared posts are going to be the ones that appeal to the lowest common denominator. 
Plus, while you're trying to hang out with your friends and family, you're going to see ads from big companies. In 2014, Facebook is set to launch video ads, and this from a site that has basically no video content. Compare this to YouTube, where the viewers want to see the best videos that match their interests. YouTube wants these viewers to see as much relevant content as possible, the creators want to reach as wide an audience as possible, and the advertisers just want to get in the middle of everything. The point is, the incentives of all parties are aligned. In 2013, YouTube made over $5 billion, most of which was paid back to the creators, the very people who make the site worth visiting. Facebook made $7.5 billion, but that all went back to the company and shareholders, not the people who make the great content, who are mainly your friends and family. I think this is a cautionary tale. The beauty of social media is that it's the user who gets to control the content and who they interact with and how. I mean, on Twitter, they don't filter any tweets, and every picture you Instagram goes out to all your followers, at least for now. But Facebook has taken control of what its users see in order to make money from them. And I think that's a problem because of the way it's changed the incentives. I mean, Facebook has this ongoing incentive to restrict more and more the organic reach of posts in order to force people to pay to promote them. And I think that really changes the ethos of the site. But what do you think? I really want to hear what you guys think about these aspects of social media and whether you've seen a similar thing to what I'm seeing.